In the voyage of life, we sometimes sail through tumultuous seas, where the winds of trials and tribulations threaten to veer us off course. It's in these tempestuous times that the divine narrative often unveils itself, showing us that the orchestrator of the universe has a grand design, even in our moments of despair. In those junctures, God is working behind the scenes, laying the stepping stones that will lead to a metamorphosis in our lives. Often when our prayers seem to echo in an abyss, or the heavens seem to turn to brass, we may be tempted to think that our cries go unheard. Yet, the Bible is rich with verses that remind us of God's unfailing love and His mighty power that operates even in silence. Take, for instance, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Now, how do we steer through these seasons of stillness where God seems silent, yet is profoundly at work? How do we interpret the signs that a divine shift is on the horizon, ready to rewrite our story? Is the realization that every chapter in our life is penned by the divine author, even when faced with adversities, James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 nudges us to consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. The crucible moments are but a refiner's fire, purifying us, molding our character to reflect the image of Christ. The divine whispers often come in the form of closed doors or unforeseen challenges. Where one door shuts, another opens. It's God's way of rerouting our path, aligning us with His grand blueprint. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5-6 through 6 reminds us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Furthermore, the tapestry of our life is interwoven with relationships that are divinely orchestrated, encounters that spark a flame of change, nudging us closer to our destiny. God often places individuals in our path to mirror His voice, to act as vessels of change. Signs of a celestial shift may come in dreams or through a renewed sense of hope and faith, despite the prevailing circumstances. It's a gentle reminder from above that the dawn is near. As Romans chapter 8, verse 28 reassures, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So, dear viewers, even when the world around seems chaotic, look for the divine clues. Embrace the journey with a heart of gratitude, knowing that every twist, every turn is a part of God's majestic narrative. For in the grand tapestry of life, each thread, no matter how entangled, is purposefully laid by the master weaver, setting the stage for a divine encore that will shift the narrative of our lives, manifesting His glory in ways beyond our imagination. Let's delve into the biblical narrative of Joseph, a young shepherd who traversed the path of betrayal, slavery, and imprisonment before ascending to the pinnacles of Egyptian governance. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 encapsulates the essence of divine orchestration. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. The adversities Joseph faced weren't mere coincidences, but divine arrangement setting the stage for a monumental shift in his life and the lives of many. Similarly, when the storm clouds gather in our lives, when adversity knocks, it's often a prelude to a divine symphony about to unfold. The discomfort, the unrest, the questioning, they are not just existential crises, but often divine nudges, urging us to look beyond the visible, to tune our ears to the celestial melody that orchestrates our lives. Now, let's reflect on those moments of unsettling quiet before dawn, the so-called bad phases. They often arrive as unsolicited guests, leaving us bewildered. Yet, in that crucible of confusion, God is often forging a new narrative, a new chapter in our life story. Each challenge is a note in a divine melody, leading to a crescendo of transformation that reverberates through the essence of our being. It's crucial to anchor our understanding in the unwavering belief that God's love is constant through the ebbs and flows, through the highs and lows. His love is not a fair weather companion, but a steadfast anchor. As Romans chapter 8, verse 28 reminds us, 
And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Each trial we undergo, each seemingly insurmountable mountain we face, is often a stepping stone, a divine step for a new dawn, a new narrative. The signs are often subtle, the whispers of change often soft. Yet as we attune our hearts and minds to the divine rhythm, we begin to discern the unfolding script of God's magnificent plan. When adversities knock on our door, it's instinctual to seek a culprit, to point fingers at ourselves, at circumstances, or even at the Creator. However, this blame game veils the profound transformation awaiting us. The struggles we face aren't for naught. They are divine signals, heralding a forthcoming metamorphosis. Our trials are but a prelude to triumph, a crucible forging our character for the blessings to come. Now, in the heat of turmoil, it might seem like a Herculean task to discern these divine signals. Yet with a heart tuned to the whispers of faith, we can perceive them. The first sign is a sense of divine discontent, a holy unrest that propels us to seek God's face more fervently. It's a tender nudge, urging us to abandon the shallow waters of complacency and to dive into the depths of divine reliance. The scripture vividly illustrates this through the narrative of Job. Despite being besieged by unimaginable calamities, Job's relentless pursuit of God's righteousness unveiled a grander blessing, a divine alteration in his life story. Job chapter 42 verses 10 through 17. His unwavering faith amidst adversity became a testimony of God's transformative power. Similarly, when we face unexpected roadblocks or find ourselves in a season of waiting, it's a sign. It's God's way of saying, pause, reflect, and draw nearer. It's a celestial beckon to lean not on our understanding, but to trust the divine script writer who is about to turn the page to a new chapter in our lives. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Moreover, when our hearts are laden with the weight of unfulfilled dreams, when our prayers seem to echo in a void, it's a divine interlude. It's God whispering, my child, trust my timing. The Bible reassures us that God makes everything beautiful in its time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Furthermore, the encounters with individuals who challenge our faith or perspectives are not mere coincidences. They are divine appointments meant to spark a flame of revelation, igniting a journey towards a higher understanding and a deeper relationship with God. Each trial, each waiting period, and every divine appointment is a meticulously orchestrated sign that God is at work, realigning our path, reshaping our desires, and redefining our destiny. So, when faced with the winds of adversity, let's not be disheartened, but be invigorated with hope, knowing that a divine narrative shift is on the horizon. Life's journey isn't a straight highway, but a winding road with a chair of ups and downs. It's akin to a riveting narrative with twists and turns, each chapter orchestrated by God to mold us into the individuals we are destined to become. When we find ourselves at a crossroad, it's crucial to reflect upon the signs God is presenting to us. Now, let's move into the biblical tale of Joseph, whose life was a testament to God's profound ability to transmute adversity into prosperity. Falsely accused and cast into the abyss of a dungeon, Joseph could have succumbed to despair. Yet, his unwavering faith was his beacon amidst the engulfing darkness. His narrative climaxed when he emerged as the Pharaoh's confidant, a remarkable twist showcasing God's magnificent plan in action. Similarly, the saga of Abraham, a paragon of patience and faith, unfolds as a comforting reassurance. His anguished wait for a progeny stretched over two and a half decades, a journey punctuated with moments of faltering faith. Yet, it was through this crucible of waiting that his faith solidified and God's promise materialized. The essence of these biblical anecdotes is a clarion call to introspection. When faced with setbacks, do we perceive them as mere roadblocks or as divinely orchestrated detours steering us towards God's grand design? Our perceptions can either entrap us in a quagmire of despair or liberate us into the realms of boundless hope and resilience. Now, 
Envision a lush garden, each flower bud veiled in a cloak of patience, awaiting the divine timing to unfurl into its full glory. Much like these buds, our lives are in a perpetual state of becoming, each challenge propelling us closer towards blossoming into the individuals God envisioned us to be. Now, suppose you've been encountering repetitive scenarios or emotions. These might be divine signposts urging a shift in perspective or action. Maybe it's a nudge towards breaking old, shackling patterns, and embracing transformative change. When the chill of isolation descends upon our lives, it's easy to misinterpret the scenario, to feel as though the world has turned a cold shoulder. However, this is far from the truth. The seeming desertion is not a verdict of rejection, but a divine setup for a deeper connection, a pulling away from the worldly crowd to create room for a heavenly crowd. It's in this space of solitude that God begins to work on the canvas of our lives, painting a new picture that tells a story of His love, grace, and power. In the Bible, we see numerous instances where God set individuals apart before elevating them to their destined positions. Joseph's journey to the palace began with a pit in a prison, places of isolation, yet they were the very corridors that led to his destiny. Similarly, Moses' sojourn in the desert was a precursor to his monumental task of leading the Israelites to the Promised Land. The process of change begins with an inner transformation. Before the external circumstances of our lives can align with God's glorious plan, there needs to be a metamorphosis from within a shedding of the old to make way for the new. This transformation is akin to the process of metamorphosis a caterpillar undergoes to become a butterfly, a profound change that unveils a new dimension of existence, echoing the scriptural truth in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. The world around us may not understand this process, and its reaction could be one of opposition or misunderstanding. Yet, it's crucial to stay rooted in the awareness that this divine process is not to push us down, but to lift us up, to change not just our situations, but our stories. As our inner beings resonate with the nature of Christ, our external realities begin to mirror this divine nature unfolding a narrative of hope, grace, and divine favor. This journey, though might be punctuated with challenges, is a beautiful unraveling of God's perfect plan for us. As we align with God's workings, staying patient and faithful, we will witness the glorious unfolding of a new chapter, a new story written by the divine author. If we are speaking to you, say a resounding amen in the comments section below. If you're a Christian navigating through a season of challenge and change in your life, this message is for you. Today, I'm going to share some signs that God might be using this season of your life to prune you for a more fantastic future He'll bring you into. We'll explore how God sometimes prunes us to make us more fruitful and ready for His purposes. But then, how can we recognize when God is pruning us? What are the benefits of trusting God in the midst of our pruning process? What should you do when God prunes you? I trust God to help us find the strength and encouragement to stand strong through this message today, in Jesus' name. Friends, life is full of changes. Some changes may be positive and exciting, such as getting married, having a baby, starting a new job, or moving to a new place. In contrast, some changes might be negative and painful, such as losing a loved one, getting divorced, being fired, or facing a health crisis. Some changes may be neutral and inevitable, such as growing older, changing seasons, or shifting trends. But whether we like it or not, change is necessary for our growth and development. Change helps us learn new things, develop new skills, discover new opportunities, and adapt to new situations. In fact, change often helps you discover things you never knew you could become or do. 
Change also helps us to become more like Christ, who's our perfect model, both in our spiritual journey and in our life here on earth. Let me show you something from three verses of scripture to further clarify this. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. 1 John 2.6 says, Whoever claims to live in Him must live as Jesus did. And chapter 4.17 adds, This is how love is made complete among us, that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. But how does change help us to become more like Christ in this world? The answer is through God's pruning. In gardening, pruning is the process of cutting away unwanted or unproductive parts of a plant to improve its health, shape, and yield. Pruning is also a metaphor for how God works in our lives to remove anything that hinders us from bearing fruit for His glory. But before we dive into the divine aspect of pruning, let's take a moment to really ponder on and appreciate how life unfolds. You see, we all go through various stages of change, from seed to bud, to blossom, and finally, to fruit. These stages parallel our spiritual journey. Hence, sometimes, when life throws its curveballs, it's a sign that we're at a stage of change that God has ordained. Jesus said in John 15, 1-2, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit He prunes so that it'll be even more fruitful. In this passage, we can see how Jesus compares Himself to a vine and every genuine believer, the branches. He says that His Father, who's the gardener, prunes every branch that bears fruit so that it'll be even more fruitful. This means that God sometimes allows or causes changes in our lives that may seem painful or difficult at first, but are meant to help us grow and produce more fruit. What kind of fruit are we talking about? The Bible tells us in Galatians 5, 22-23, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of God's presence and work in our lives. It's the result of being connected to Jesus, who is the source of life. The fruit of the working of the Spirit in us is also a way we glorify God and bless others around us. I believe that no matter how introverted or how social you are, you want to honor God and bless those around you in a notable way. Beloved, God also has the same desire. In fact, it's the same reason He's taking you through what you're going through now. Have you ever observed a skilled gardener at work or worked in a garden yourself? Pruning is a crucial aspect of this work. Just like a gardener prunes plants to foster better growth, God prunes us to prepare us for more. It's not always what we expect, but how can we recognize when God is pruning us? Here are some signs that God may be pruning you to prepare you for more. 1. You experience loss or disappointment. God may prune you by taking away something or someone that you love or value. This may be a relationship, a job, a dream, a possession, or anything else that you hold dear. This may seem cruel or unfair, but you must believe that God has a higher purpose for your loss. He may want you to depend on Him more than anything else. He may want you to learn something new or important. Or He may just be clearing up space to make room for something better coming into your life. If you don't know this, you may think He hates you or doesn't want you to be happy, but that's not true. If you don't believe anything else, believe that His thoughts of you are good thoughts to give you a great future. Everything He does or will do in your life is aimed at achieving that. 2. You face challenges or difficulties. God may prune you by allowing you to go through trials or hardships. This may be a health issue, a financial problem, a family conflict, a personal struggle, or anything else that causes you stress or pain. 
It often seems overwhelming to deal with hardships that seem to have no ending. However, no matter how overwhelming or hopeless it feels, God has something better for you than this crisis in your life. Challenges or difficult times help us grow stronger and wiser. God will often use them to help us develop some skills or qualities and overcome the enemy's obstacles in our lives. 3. You feel uncomfortable or dissatisfied. This is a crucial one. It often happens when God's about to take you to the next level. He starts by disrupting your status quo. This may be a change of environment, a change of perspective, a change of direction, or anything else that causes you discomfort or dissatisfaction. Because we easily get used to our comfort zone, this may be unsettling or confusing at first, but there's more in your future and God's about to bring you into it. Hear what his word says in Proverbs 23:18. There is surely a future hope for you and your hope will not be cut off. God may be disrupting your status quo to explore new possibilities or opportunities. He may be driving you to discover new passions or gifts and pursue new goals. Whatever it is and wherever it may be in your life right now, know that these are some of the signs that you're being prepared. Don't get discouraged. Your future will be greater than your past. Your future will be brighter than your present. Don't give up. Don't give in. And don't give out. Of course, there may be other signs that only God knows and understands. The important thing is to trust Him and His wisdom in all things. He knows what He's doing, and He has your best interests at heart. Joseph's story beautifully illustrates God's pruning process. It's a testament to how God prunes us for greater things. Joseph was sold into slavery, wrongly accused and imprisoned. But through his unwavering faith in God's plan, he emerged as a wise and powerful ruler in Egypt saving his family and countless others from the famine that ravaged the earth in his days. In today's world, we often find ourselves facing daunting challenges, struggles, and setbacks. It's easy to question why God would allow these hardships. But, my friends, these moments of adversity might just be the signs that God is pruning you for something extraordinary. As Christians, we believe in a God who knows the plans He has for us plans for good and not for evil, plans for a future and hope. Therefore, our perspective as God's children is built on faith and trust, even when life seems to be falling apart. So, the signs of pruning are actually opportunities for growth in our faith and character, not attempts to destroy us. So when you find yourself in the middle of a storm, remember that God is with you. Your challenges are not punishments, but the refining fire that shapes your character. As Romans 5, 3-4 tells us, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Beloved, your trials are building your character for a greater purpose. Ultimately, you must remember that Jesus is the way the truth, and the life. When you see these signs of pruning around you, turn to Him. Hold on to Jesus as the constant, unwavering anchor in the storm. He is the one who will guide you through life's trials and prepare you for more. I encourage you to hold steadfast to your faith and prayerfully trust that God is working for your good. Surround yourself with godly friends who can support you and pray for you. Share your struggles and questions with them and let them help you find answers. Listen to their advice and encouragement from God's Word. You can also personally find verses that speak to your situation and comfort your soul. Memorize them and repeat them when you feel confused or discouraged. Apply them to your life and your situation. With His guidance, you'll emerge from this season stronger, wiser, and ready for the extraordinary future that awaits you. The world is an uncertain place. You must be careful who you tell about the blessings God brings into your life. 
I am sure you've heard this warning before. The Bible mentions that enemies are a real thing. Do not be naive. Not everyone who smiles to your face is qualified to be called your friend. Not everyone who calls themselves your friend is truly your friend or wants the best for you. I want to really stress this point because I sometimes see people get hurt by other people's actions and then turn and blame God for whatever situation they find themselves in when God had nothing to do with it. In truth, they enabled the problems themselves. The Bible mentions in Psalm chapter 23, verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And Matthew chapter 5, 44 says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. It is naive to think you don't have enemies because you are a good person who doesn't hurt or offend others. We have enemies who even pose as our friends. That's the society we live in. It's difficult to differentiate between friends and enemies. So we must be cautious with what we say or do around people. That's why we don't tell everyone everything good that comes into our lives. Why? Because not everyone celebrates your achievements. Hence, some things are better said only when the time is right. In this video, I will discuss God's blessings and how to handle them wisely. Following what I share in this message will make a massive difference in your life. When God blesses you, it's receiving something wonderful, something that makes you rich in many different ways. It's having a special gift from God. But here's the thing. Sometimes we unintentionally bring trouble or sadness into our lives by what we do with that special blessing. You may be wondering how. Well, it's when we talk too much especially with people who might not really be our faithful friends, even though they pretend to be. These are people who pretend to be nice when they really aren't. So, put simply, when good things happen because of God's blessings, it's best to find out how to enjoy that blessing and how to be careful about who you share them with to avoid unnecessary troubles. How does keeping some of your blessings to yourself make you wise? We're taught to share and testify about the good things God does in our lives, and that's very important, but it's not that simple. Sometimes, silence can be a shield, protecting us from unforeseen troubles. And this is a concept rooted in the wisdom of the Bible. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 2, for example, says, Let another praise you, and not your own mouth, someone else, and not your own lips. This verse encourages us to be humble and not boast about our blessings, letting others recognize our goodness rather than us shouting it from the rooftops. Now, think about this. Some people may not be happy seeing you doing well. This is the pure truth. They might secretly wish for your downfall. And if they notice you making progress, it can stir up bitterness and envy in their hearts. Holding back a bit on sharing your blessings can reduce the jealousy around you and partly protect you from the dangers that can come with having enemies, or what we call frenemies, enemies posed as friends. It is a way to keep your peace and tranquility intact in the face of potential adversity. Moreover, you build your faith in God by not overly flaunting your blessings. It's you saying, I trust in God's plan for me, and I don't need to boast about these blessings to validate myself. God will always come through for me, Therefore, I will stay open to him and let his blessing speak rather than me rubbing it in everyone's face all the time. In the Bible, we find a beautiful verse in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7 that says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So. As you quietly acknowledge your blessings and trust in God's goodness, you're also avoiding unnecessary trouble and strengthening your faith in Him. It's a win-win situation. It keeps you grounded and closer to God's grace, while also placing you in a position to inspire confidence in others because they can see God's faithfulness in your life. Joseph's story perfectly shows how talking too much about what God is doing in your life can lead to trouble. His story can be found in the book of Genesis, starting from chapter 37. 
Joseph was born to Jacob and Rachel, and he was his father's favorite. Jacob gave Joseph a unique coat because he loved him and stood out among his brothers. This and Joseph's dreams about his glorious future made his brothers jealous. But Joseph didn't help the situation because he kept sharing his dreams with his brothers. In his dreams, he saw himself and his brothers binding sheaves in the field, and his sheaf stood upright while the others bowed down to it. Joseph openly shared this dream with his brothers, and they became even more envious and angry. Then Joseph shared his second dream. In this dream, he saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing down to him. He even told his father this time. This further increased the anger and jealousy of his brothers. The result of his openness was that his brothers plotted against him and sold him as a slave. Joseph went through many trials and hardships because of this careless behavior. Now, let's focus on the lesson of why some dreams should be kept to yourself, mainly using his story. You see, Joseph's story in the Bible teaches us a vital lesson about the importance of keeping specific dreams, visions, or blessings to ourselves. When Joseph shared his dreams with his brothers, he was excited and probably thought they would share in his enthusiasm. Little did he know that not everyone can handle or appreciate the vision that someone else has been given. The consequences of Joseph's openness were severe. His brothers, overwhelmed with jealousy, sold him into slavery. Joseph went through immense hardships, including being falsely accused and imprisoned. He endured all of this because he openly revealed the dreams he had seen. The key lesson here is that not all dreams or visions should be shared with everyone. Some dreams are meant to be personal journeys that you undertake, and their significance may only become clear with time. By revealing his dreams prematurely, Joseph put himself through unnecessary trials. Now, imagine if Joseph had kept his dreams to himself. He might have avoided the envy and anger of his brothers, slavery, and the subsequent challenges. Yes, the journey to actualizing that dream wouldn't have been smooth, but some things could have been avoided. His dreams would still have come to fruition in the end, as we see in his rise to become Egypt's prime minister. Somehow, God would have made a way for him via other means. In this way, Joseph's story serves as a powerful reminder of the wisdom in keeping some dreams and blessings close to your heart until the right time, allowing them to manifest in their own way without the interference of others. There is another person from the Bible who wisely chose to remain silent about some great blessing in his life. Let us see and understand the remarkable outcomes that unfolded due to his decision. Did you know that the Apostle Paul had an incredible journey? marked by profound visions, revelations, and the enduring thorn in his flesh that humbled him. Paul's story is a compelling example of how keeping certain blessings and challenges to oneself can allow God's grace and power to shine through. Paul, an apostle, specially chosen by God to preach the gospel, was no stranger to divine revelations. He was privy to extraordinary insights into the mysteries of Christ and his church. Yet amid these profound blessings, Paul also faced a perplexing challenge, which was a thorn in his flesh, described as a messenger of Satan, tormenting him and keeping him humble. In his humility and vulnerability, he repeatedly prayed to God, seeking relief from this torment. However, God's response to Paul was both unexpected and enlightening. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It was a remarkable moment when Paul learned that God's strength is most fully revealed in our weaknesses. Here, Paul kept silent about his blessings and suffering, allowing God's grace and power to manifest in his life instead. He refrained from boasting about his visions or revelations. He chose instead to emphasize his weaknesses and the hardships he endured for Christ's sake. As he humbly stated, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. He acknowledged that he had become, in a sense, a fool in boasting, but he did so to glorify God. In his decision to keep quiet about his blessings and trials, God's grace and power were most visibly displayed in Paul's life. 
Practicing gratitude instead can be a powerful way to acknowledge and appreciate the blessings we receive from God. It changes the lens through which we view life. By nurturing a heart of gratitude, we intentionally shift our focus from what we might not have to the goodness already in our lives. It's a beautiful way to cherish the blessings that come our way. When it comes to God's blessings upon your life, keeping a low profile is a humble approach that carries profound meaning. This approach reminds us that our blessings aren't meant to be used for boasting or elevating ourselves above others. Instead, they are gifts from God, which we should use to glorify Him and serve others with love and humility. It's a reminder that our blessings are meant to be shared, not paraded. Sharing our blessings with others in a humble way is a noble gesture. This practice allows us to bless and uplift others without seeking the spotlight for ourselves. It's essential to remember that the purpose of sharing our blessings is not to draw attention to our generosity, but to genuinely make a positive impact on someone's life. Let's look at Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 6, verses 1-4, through 4, where He teaches about giving in secret. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. This passage encourages us to do good deeds and give without seeking attention or applause. Practicing gratitude, keeping a low profile with our blessings, and sharing them humbly can transform how we view and interact with the world, allowing us to appreciate the goodness in our lives and spread it to others. It's not an alien notion, feeling shackled by our struggles. Be it strained relationships, wayward dreams, or the internal skirmishes that leave us weary. Yet, the scriptures impart a profound truth, illuminating a path of surrender and trust. The illustrious narrative of King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20 stands as a testament to this. Facing a formidable foe, the king, engulfed in trepidation, turns his face towards heaven, proclaiming, We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. 2 Chronicles 20.12 this act of surrender isn't one of defeat, but a stride of faith into the realm where God orchestrates victories beyond our comprehension. The words of Jesus in Matthew 6.33, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well, beckon us to a higher realm of existence. It's an invitation to shift our gaze from the tempest to the creator of the storm, from the battle to the commander of angel armies. Our journey of faith isn't exempt from battles. Yet in every skirmish, there's a whisper calling us to step back and let God step in. The narrative of David and Goliath unveils this mystery further. A shepherd boy, armed with nothing but a sling and a stone, stands against a giant. It wasn't the prowess of David that felled Goliath, but the might of the God he entrusted the battle to this narrative unfolds the essence of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Moreover, the disposition of our heart in the face of adversity reveals where our allegiance lies. Jesus, in Luke 6, 27, and 28, encourages a posture of love and benevolence even towards those who stand against us. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. This divine paradigm not only disarms the forces of negativity, but reflects the heart of a God who is love. The essence of surrender isn't a passive resignation, but an active entrustment of our battles to God. It's a vibrant dance of trust where each step of surrender propels us into a realm of peace that transcends understanding, a fortress of joy amidst the storm. 
As we traverse through life's battlefield, may we echo the humility of John the Baptist, who said, He must become greater, I must become less. John 3.30 For in the relinquishment of our battles to the hands of God lies the victory already won, a promise sealed in the blood of the Lamb. As soldiers on this earthly realm, our reflex is to fight, to conquer, to prevail. Yet, the scripture nudges us to a different rhythm. In 2 Chronicles 20.15, it says, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. It's a divine paradigm where our might is found in yielding, our victory in surrender. It's not a call to a passive stance, but a proactive trust in the one who holds the stars, yet whispers peace into your storm. Your role in this divine narrative is not to fight the battle, but to hand over the reins of control to God and to find refuge under His mighty wings. The beauty of this surrender is that it positions you to witness the grandeur of God's power. It's standing by the Red Sea, staff in hand, watching God part the waters. It's marching around Jericho, witnessing walls crumble at the sound of faith. The journey of surrender often begins with a humble prayer, a whispered, God, I give this battle to you. It's an invitation for the divine to intervene, to showcase his splendor through our story. Our role is to stay rooted in faith, eyes fixed on God, as he orchestrates victory in the unseen realm. Our task is to adorn the armor of God, wield the sword of truth, and march to the rhythm of divine promise, knowing that the battle is already won. In Matthew 11:28, Jesus extends an invitation. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It's a beckoning to lay down our swords, to find rest in the midst of battle, knowing that the victory is secured in Christ. So as you face the battles of life, remember, your strength is not in your ability to fight, but in your ability to surrender, to lay down your worries at the feet of Jesus, to entrust your battles to the Almighty. It's a journey from striving to surrender, from fear to faith, from battle to victory. And as you step into the realm of surrender, you step into the narrative of divine victory, where battles are not lost or won, but surrendered to the mighty hand of God. Your role is to trust, to yield, to rest in the assurance that God is fighting for you, and He has already secured the victory. So lay down your sword, lift up your eyes to heaven, and watch God move mountains in your midst. Surrender is the bridge between our human fragility and divine strength. It's where our fears dissolve into faith. Our worries give way to worship. It's where we learn the monumental lesson that our earthly struggles are mere shadows compared to the eternal, victorious light of God's promise. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalm 46, 10. Every adversity we encounter is an invitation to witness God's power in action, to marvel at how effortlessly He can turn trials into triumphs, sorrows into joy, our battles are His opportunities to reveal His glory, to fortify our faith, and to draw us closer to Him. When we are encircled by our troubles, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, to let fear dictate our actions. Yet these are the sacred moments when we're called to step back, to hand over the struggles to God, and watch with awe as He orchestrates victory in ways we could never have imagined. Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Psalm 55, 22. And in this divine exchange, we don't just witness God's power, but we experience a profound transformation within. 
Our fears are replaced with a robust faith, our anxiety with divine assurance, and our doubts with a deep-seated trust in God's plan. Remember, every time we choose to let God take over our battles, we're not retreating, but rather advancing into a realm of faith where miracles unfold, where the impossible becomes possible, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 7. So as you face the battles of life, remember to pause, to surrender, and to let God take the lead. For in His mighty hands, victory is not just a possibility, but a divine promise. And it's in this sacred surrender where our true strength lies, where our faith finds its wings, soaring high above the storms, anchored in the unshakable, victorious assurance of God's love and power. Jehoshaphat, though a king, felt the same fear that churned in every citizen's heart. Yet, his response was not one of despair, but a beckoning of divine grace. He didn't resort to earthly strategies, nor did he fall prey to the voices of defeat. Instead, he instigated a kingdom-wide fast, urging every soul to seek God's face. It wasn't a mere ritual, but a collective cry for divine intervention, a submission of their fears, weaknesses, and the looming battle to God's sovereign hands. As Jehoshaphat stood before his people, he prayed earnestly, acknowledging God's supremacy over every force of nature and men. His prayer, as recorded in 2 Chronicles 20, 6 through 12, reverberates through ages, reminding us that our battles, no matter how formidable, crumble before God's majestic power. He echoed the heart of a warrior grounded not in pride, but humble dependence on God. O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand are power and might, so that none is able to withstand you. For we are powerless against the great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. In the silence that followed, a hush of expectancy enveloped the nation, a tableau of faith that yearned for God's answer. And God did respond, assuring them of his presence in the battle propelling them towards a miraculous victory that echoed his glorious name. This narrative isn't just an ancient tale, but a living testament for every soul caught in life's battles. When fear encroaches and odds stack high, remember, the battle isn't yours to fight alone. Lay down your weapons of anxiety, control, and despair. Lift your eyes unto the heavens, surrendering your fight to God. And as you do, you'll find God fighting for you, paving a way through the storm, leading you to the shores of victory. The reassurance is profound. You are not alone in your fight. God's mighty hand is stretching forth, orchestrating victories beyond human comprehension. So, in every trial you face, remember, relinquish your fight to God for in Him lies the promise of victory. Through every struggle, His grace remains your unfailing shield, His love your undying hope. The words of assurance in 2 Chronicles 20, 15 through 17 resonate across time. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Do not fear or be dismayed, Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. This wasn't about a physical battle. It was a profound showcase of God's dominion and love. Jehoshaphat and his people were instructed to position themselves, to stand still. They were not called to orchestrate a strategic warfare, but to witness the deliverance orchestrated by the Almighty. Now, let's transition this ancient wisdom into our modern-day battles. When the storms of life rally against us, 
we often become the playwrights of our own mental dramas. We cast characters, anticipate confrontations, and script dialogues, entangling ourselves in a whirlpool of hypothetical scenarios. It's a taxing, tumultuous endeavor, one that veils the reality of God's assurance from our sight. The essence of handing over our battles to God isn't about adopting a stance of passivity. It's about shifting our posture from one of control to a position of trust and obedience. It's about relinquishing the reins of our circumstances into the hands of the one who commands the winds and the waves. There's a beauty in stillness, in the quiet surrender to God's will. It's in that stillness we discern the whispers of hope, the melodies of divine assurance that echo the promise, I am with you. And it's a promise not just echoed in the quiet, but proven in the tumult. When we untangle ourselves from the web of worry, when we cease the endless mental rehearsals of battles, we create space, a sacred space for faith to flourish, for peace to pervade, and for God's power to manifest. It's an invitation to witness the magnificence of divine intervention, to embrace the peace that transcends understanding, and to revel in the liberating truth the battle is truly not ours, but God's. So, as you stand on the precipice of worry, may you choose to surrender your fight to the Almighty and behold the unfolding of His majestic salvation. Our lives are entangled in the web of uncertainties. Questions about the future, regrets of the past, and the challenges of the present moment often vie for our attention. However, in the midst of these torrents of thoughts, there is a gentle whisper reminding us of a divine promise. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34 advises us, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This verse isn't merely a suggestion, but a profound truth that lightens our burden and empowers us to live in the now. Yet. The human mind often wanders in the labyrinth of worries. It's almost as if we have a penchant for picking up burdens that don't belong to us. However, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 nudges us towards a liberating truth. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. This isn't a one-time act, but a daily endeavor. Every morning as the sun heralds a new day, we are given a choice to either cling on to our worries or to lay them at the feet of our Heavenly Father. The journey of relinquishing control might seem daunting, yet it's a pathway laden with peace. It's akin to learning to dance in the rhythm of grace, where each step aligns us more with God's will. As we sync our steps with the divine melody, we find that our fears start to dissipate. The celestial narrative unfolds in Revelation chapter 22, verse 5 painting a vision of God's kingdom where the cycle of day and night is transcended and a divine luminescence envelops us all. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. This isn't merely a tale of future glory, but a tender reminder of God's eternal nature and His encompassing embrace, which remains open to us in every twist and turn of life. In our earthly journey, we often find ourselves grappling with anxieties, trying to maneuver the reins of control to navigate through storms. We become entangled in a relentless struggle, striving to mold the outcomes to our liking, often forgetting that there's a divine helmsman, ever willing and ever capable to steer us through the turbulent seas. But how do we transition from the relentless grasping to a posture of trust? It's about relinquishing the illusion of control about gently laying down our burdens at His feet and allowing His hands to mold our destiny. Consider for a moment the serene image of a leaf drifting along the current of a river. It doesn't resist the flow, nor does it fret about the twists and turns ahead. It trusts the journey, knowing that eventually it will reach calm waters. Similarly, our lives are part of a larger divine narrative, orchestrated by a loving God. When we allow ourselves to give it to God, we're essentially permitted the divine current to carry us through the tempest towards tranquility. In the scriptures, 
We often come across profound truths that anchor us in times of uncertainty. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This verse isn't merely a comforting phrase, but a call to action, to pray, to be thankful and to trust. We might be accustomed to holding tightly onto the reins of control, fearing what might happen if we let go. Yet there's liberation in releasing our grip and allowing God to take over. This doesn't mean adopting a passive stance, but rather engaging with life from a place of trust and assurance, knowing that God is in control. Imagine a child holding onto the hand of their father as they cross a busy street. The child doesn't worry about the traffic, for they trust their father to guide them safely across. Our relationship with God is much like that. When we clasp onto his hand with unwavering faith, we're guided through the complexities of life with a reassured heart. The journey from worry to faith is like a passage from turbulent waters to a peaceful shore. As we learn to entrust our concerns to God, we find a peace that surpasses all understanding, a hope that's unshakable, and a life that's beautifully unfolding under the tender gaze of the Almighty. So the next time worries knock on your door, remember to hand them over to God and watch how miraculously He turns your trials into triumphs. Each worry we harbor is like a cloud obstructing the sun's nurturing light. Yet in a simple act of surrender, we can clear the skies, allowing God's light to pour through, nurturing our souls, filling us with a warmth that radiates peace. When we entrust our worries to God, we embark on a journey of faith, a passage from fret to freedom. Our lives often resemble a boat in turbulent waters, yet faith is our anchor. When we cast this anchor into the depths of God's love, we find a stillness that transcends understanding. Worry tempts us to take control, to navigate the storm alone. But faith invites us to relinquish control, to trust in God's navigation. It's a lesson in surrender, an expedition from fear to faithfulness. We sometimes bear the weight of the world upon our shoulders, forgetting that it's God who holds the world in His hands. The conundrum of control entangles us, yet the solution is a simple act of surrender, letting go and letting God. The narrative of anxiety is a self-authored script of what-ifs, a fiction that distracts from the divine truth that God is in control. The antidote to worry is the serene acceptance of God's sovereignty, a peaceful yielding that unlocks the door to a life of faith. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, Jesus teaches us not to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. It's an invitation to live in the present, to cast our cares upon God, knowing that He cares for us. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. So, as we navigate the waters of life, may we anchor our hearts in God's enduring love, casting aside the shackles of worry and embracing the liberating truth that in God we find our refuge, our strength, and our peace. With each surrender, we step into a realm of serenity, a domain where faith overrides fear, where trust triumphs over turmoil, and where love lights the way. Through this divine alliance, we unveil the profound joy and peace that accompanies a life lived in harmonious trust with God. Take a gentle stroll through the pages of Psalms, and you'll encounter a comforting truth in Psalm 121, verses 3 through 4. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber indeed. He who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. This passage unveils a profound reality, the ceaseless vigil of God over our lives. There isn't a moment when we are outside the purview of His loving gaze. In a world where even the most vigilant guardians eventually succumb to slumber, there exists an eternal guardian in God who never tires, never sleeps. It's a comforting reality that God's vigil over our lives is unbroken, now and forevermore, as concluded in verse 8 of the same psalm. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. The nature of our existence is such that we are not designed to bear the weight of the world alone. Our limitations are not flaws, but gentle reminders to lean on the Omnipotent, to trust in His divine plan. 
The unseen tomorrows can indeed be a source of anxiety, but they also present an opportunity to exercise faith, to entrust God with the mysteries that lie ahead. How often do we navigate through life's labyrinth with a furrowed brow, burdened by worries that are beyond our control? Yet, the divine invitation is always open, beckoning us to cast our anxieties onto Him. The antidote to worry is a humble submission to the divine, a conscious decision to entrust our cares to God, to adopt an attitude of faith and prayer. Living a life unburdened by worry does not imply a lack of concern. Life will present challenges, some of which may momentarily shake us. Yet, in these very situations, lies the potential for an enriching relationship with God. When we hand over our problems to God, it's crucial to also relinquish the reins of dictating the answers. Trusting God implies being at peace with His answers, even when they are not aligned with our expectations. The exercise of faith is not a one-off event, but a lifelong journey. It's about developing a spiritual reflex to our circumstances, where our first instinct is to turn towards God, to seek His guidance and entrust Him with our fears and hopes. It's a beautiful surrender, a serene acceptance that amidst the chaos of existence, there's a divine order, a loving vigilance that never ceases. Every challenge you face is a call back to the heart of the divine. It's a gentle nudge, reminding us of our inherent design to walk alongside the Almighty, not apart from Him. When the fog of uncertainty clouds your vision, it's a divine cue to return to the haven of trust, to tether your anxieties to the throne of God. As the scripture enlightens in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Each word resonates with the melody of hope, urging us to lay down our burdens at His feet. When trials knock on your door, they beckon a deep communion with God. They invite us to shelve our self-reliance and unearth a treasure far more enduring, a boundless trust in God's benevolent plan. The Apostle Paul epitomized this surrender when he professed in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This profound truth beckons us to relinquish our worries and embrace a faith so robust it dwarfs the mountains of doubt that loom in our hearts. The antidote to worry is not mere positivity, but a rooted faith that blooms from the soil of God's Word. It's a divine exchange, casting away the shackles of fear and adorning a cloak of faith that's woven with the promises of God. When the whispers of worry seek to derail you, let the affirmations of faith be your steadying force. Speak the promises of God over your circumstances and witness the clouds of despair dissipate, revealing the stars of hope that have been shining all along. Prayer isn't merely a ritual. It's a rendezvous with the divine. It's where fears are traded for faith, sorrows for joy, and tears for songs of hope. It's where we don't just talk about our problems, but we lay them down, entrusting every facet of our lives into the capable hands of God. Jesus, during his earthly sojourn, modeled this divine dialogue. He entrusted his concerns, his mission, and his very essence to the Heavenly Father. It's a lesson in absolute trust, inviting us to do the same. So as you tread upon the waters of uncertainty, may you echo the trust that Jesus exhibited. And as you unfurl the sails of faith, may the winds of God's grace propel you towards the tranquil shores of His perfect will. Your journey might be fraught with storms, but with God as your compass, no tempest can veer you off course.